this uh, <coughs> this video was requested. Um, I was asked to do a question about Chevy Chev's inequality. All right, so <coughs> let's um, just set up the inequality I'm going to use. First of all, uh, what does Chevy Chev's inequality say? Uh, Basically, it's a little bit tricky to remember, actually, but it's the probability um, that the random variable, okay, its distance away from the mean, okay, let me just call it the expected value of x, okay, so I have the absolute values here, okay, you can think of this as the distance from the random variable to the mean, okay, uh, this quantity being, um, greater than, uh, this is a strict inequality, some number, I'm going to call it t, times sigma, okay, this is the standard deviation, okay, what is this probability? Uh, we can say that it is actually bounded above by uh, 1 over t squared. <coughs> so there's more to the statement than this, um, but basically what Chebyshev's inequality says is that this is true uh, for any t. So for all t greater than zero, this means for all, in case you're not familiar with some sort of higher level math symbols, for all t greater than zero, uh, random variable x, okay, with the, you know, typical notation, right, the expectation, the mean is e of x. Uh, this is my standard deviation. Okay, again, why don't I put an x right here just to make sure you know that. So we have this bound. It's bounded above by this quantity right here. All right. All right, so I want to um, do an example of this. Okay, and of course read the question I gave at the beginning. This question, by the way, is just a modified version of a question given in the Aztec manual. Okay, I can't take it directly from there because of copyright issues, things like that. But I just sort of modified it um, slightly so that I can use it. All right, so um, let's go to the question, okay? Um, the question wants me to find an upper bound on a specific quantity using Chebyshev's inequality. So here is sort of uh, what they want me to do. Um, they want me to find, well, they give me that um, x... Okay, we have a random variable x, and it's distributed exponentially uh, with lambda 2. So a parameter, which is lambda, is 2. And by the way, different books use different things. I hate that. I mean, the books I've been, when I was studying for it, <coughs> they always use lambda for the parameter involving exponential distribution. I've seen beta, and I've also seen theta. So whatever. Um... And I want to find a bound on this probability, okay? I want to find an upper bound, okay? An upper bound on uh, the probability, okay, that, again, and I'm just saying this because it's kind of helpful to think of it this way in terms of remembering it. The distance uh, that a random variable is away from its mean, okay? Um, <coughs> is uh, greater than its standard deviation. <coughs> so I want to know the probability that a random variable, um, random variable's distance from the mean is greater than the standard deviation. I want to find an upper bound for this. Now there's a couple of things that um, you can observe. Uh, the first thing, uh, the first thing being what is t? In the formulation I gave a moment ago uh, regarding Chebyshev's inequality, I see hopefully immediately, right, that uh, for Chebyshev, Chebyshev's um, inequality that I wrote down earlier, this is that basically t is 1, right? If t is 1, then we know according to the theorem, the inequality, that this should be automatically less than 1 over t squared, so less than 1. Right? Um, let's do better though. Let's do better. Let's find, uh, I mean, maybe, so for example, P, of course, a lot of you guys are studying for that, I, I, I think, because those are the videos you guys watch. Um, but um, 
they'll have multiple choice, right? And maybe they have a better bound than that. Maybe they don't just have one as uh, an option. Maybe they say, uh, what's the, the, the smallest upper bound? Okay, then you can actually do some work, right? You can't just memorize Chebyshev's inequality and say, okay, it's less than one, I'm done. But what can we do? Uh, well, this is not too bad, right? So um, let's write down, first of all, some, some facts we know about the exponential distribution. And if you're, you're close to taking your exam, you should just know these. Okay, first one is just, uh, well, what is um, the density function for the exponential distribution uh, given that uh, this is my um, lambda, okay? Um, you know that the density function is always lambda e to the negative lambda x, okay? And um, we know that. What else do we know? We know the expectation. The expectation for uh, an exponential random variable is always one over lambda. Okay, let me just be a little more clear here, right? This is my lambda, okay? And this is always equal to lambda e to the negative lambda x, all right? Uh, the expectation, remember, is always one over lambda. So that's just a half, so no big deal. One over two. Uh, the variance is also something you should know. Uh, the variance of an exponential random variable is one over lambda squared, therefore it's one over four, or one over four, right? Because this is one over lambda squared. This is one of the easier ones to remember, actually, if I, in my opinion, in my opinion. Another thing you should know, by the way, is the CDF. You should definitely know the CDF, especially when it comes to computing integral. You never want to compute an integral with an exponential distribution. You just never do, right? So capital F, uh, the CDF, you should also know this. For this particular case, it's just one minus e to the negative two x. Okay, it's always, it's always in general, actually, we write it underneath, and I, I think you guys probably know this, one minus e to the negative lambda x. All right, uh, so let's answer this question then. Um, let's see what we can do regarding um, an upper bound, an upper bound, right? Let me get rid of this stuff, give myself some, some room, and let's find an upper bound. Not too bad, I think. Well, let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. So I'm just going to start with this. I'm going to replace uh, things I know. So as we, we just discussed, we have the expectation. We also have the standard deviation. So the probability that um, my random variable x has a distance uh, from its mean that uh, the probability that it is, this quantity, is greater than the standard deviation um, is what? Let's make some substitutions, right? So this is now equal to the probability um, that the random variable x is less than, now the mean we computed, uh, because lambda is two, uh, the expectation is a half, so one half. And we wanna know that this is uh, greater than the standard deviation. The variance is a fourth, which means the standard deviation is also a half. All right. Um, now I just need to compute this. Um, hopefully you guys are comfortable with absolute value. Um, this, by the way, translates into an or statement, an or statement. You can go that route and I'd have to add some things, but instead I'm gonna change it to an and statement. We do this by just using the complement of this probability, right? So what I can say from here is that this is equal to one minus, just your typical using the complement uh, situation. Uh, the probability of the absolute value okay, is now less than or equal to a half. Okay, I'm going to compute it this way. Um, and this doesn't matter for continuous random variables, but I did change this to uh, no longer strictly great, uh, less than or equal to now, right? So now I'm going to use the definition of absolute value. You should be very comfortable with this, doing problems, right? This is 1 minus uh, the probability that I have this now compound inequality, negative a half, uh, less than or equal to x minus a half, less than or equal to a half, right? It's a lot of halves floating around, kind of annoying. No big deal, right? Um, now what you want to do, okay, with this compound inequality, because that's two inequalities, it just isolate the random variable x. Okay, so this gives me something quite nice, actually. This now gives me one minus uh, the probability. Uh, by the way, there's no more absolute value, right? I, I just use the definition. 
add the, uh, add a half to everything. Zero is less than x is less than or equal to one. We're in good shape now, right? Because uh, we know what this is. This, by the way, remember, I mean, random variable x for exponential is always greater than or equal to zero. Depends on the question. Some is strictly greater than zero, some is greater than or equal to zero. It doesn't matter because it's continuous. Probability of zero is zero. I don't get into those details. But anyways, this, you can either use a CDF, because this is the probability x is less than one, less than equal to one. So you can use a CDF, or you can use an integral. But I mean, either way, don't compute the integral, right? because this is equal to one minus, let me just write out the integral. The integral you would compute is zero to one uh, of the density function, two e to the negative two x dx. Do not, I mean, in the beginning, compute this, whatever, but you should be comfortable you just write this down. Exam situation, you have no time to compute this. You just need to know this. So this is equal to, um, this is equal to one minus the CDF evaluated at one. I wrote down the CDF, but um, I erased it. One minus, one minus E to the negative two, right? So this is equal to E to the negative two. And by the way, that's less than 0 0.2. This is something like, I don't remember, 0.13 or something. Regardless, it bounded above by 0.2. So maybe I'm just thinking, sort of anticipating a question on Chebyshev's inequality. Maybe 0.2 is one of my upper bounds as an option, as an answer. Uh, this would be this would be showing that that's actually true. All right, tell me what you think. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, comment on the video. And always uh, feel free to request anything. All right, thank you.